Damn, son, where'd you find this? <laughs> You're listening to Slater Kinney live on KEXP. Oh, oh, oh. 
You're listening to Slater Kinney live on KEXP. That was absolutely gorgeous. That is the final track on your beautiful and emotional new album, Little Rope, and what a powerful way to end. You've got me all choked up now that I'm the one who has to start talking. Thank you so much for that beautiful performance. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Yeah, we really appreciate being here and being able to share that with you. Yeah, we love being here at KXP, and we're just grateful for you guys and what you do for the Northwest and around the world, really. So, yeah, happy to have this be here on release week. Well, thank you so much for bringing these songs and this beautiful new record to us. We feel so lucky that you've been a part of over half of KEXP's history. I mean, it's been so many years, and we were so lucky to be there right from the beginning. And... Oh, again, just there's just nothing like seeing you perform live. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, I mean, I think we owe a lot of our like early start to to KEXP and stations like you that played our music when we were, you know, just a small band from Olympia. So it's you know it's a it's a recipro reciprocal relationship. I think. Yeah, and we are excited to 
play these songs live in general. I think the, the new album is really suited for the live setting and you know, it has that emotionality that we love to bring to a stage, kind of meet people where they're at and bring whatever versions are ourselves are there. And uh, yeah, very excited. Well, Carrie, I am so very sorry about the loss you experienced last year with the tragic accident and you lost your mom in a car accident in Italy and you found comfort in playing the guitar hours and hours on end. And you've also talked about the restorative power of touch. And I'm sure that can mean in many ways, but touching that instrument that you know so well, can you tell me a little bit about that time with the guitar? Sure. So I, I learned to play guitar uh, when I was uh, about 15. I went to a music store in Seattle up in Capitol Hill and uh, it was a means for me to express myself when I didn't really have the words as an adolescent. And I don't think I had felt that incoherent until I was struck with grief. There's a sense of being misshapen and lost. But the guitar gave me a ritual. I know what the choreography is. I know what to do with my hands. I didn't really know what to do with almost anything else. Uh, I was thrust into so much uncertainty and uh, it allowed me to give shape to my days and to place uh, my fingers on the neck of the guitar, the frets of the guitar. Uh, it was kind of like praying or meditating. I could infuse the songs which were still a living thing and I was dealing with a, a sense of of the end, of finitude, but the, the songs were malleable and I was able to play and have, and essentially commune with them uh, because they were living and breathing and music is a living and breathing thing. And so it was very important to me to return to something that I knew in a time where I was dealing with so many unknowns. Well, it must have been very comforting to spend time with an old friend and another old friend that you spent a lot of time with is your, one of your oldest and closest friends and your musical collaborator and Corin. And how did working together on this record help you process your grief and loss? Uh, I mean, first and foremost, it just instilled with us, instilled in us a gratitude for one another, for the longevity for sticking with it, for all of the twists and turns in a life, instead of lamenting those, uh, you feel grateful that you have more bends in the road, you know, more hills to climb. Uh, because when you're dealing with loss and uh, a sense of mortality, you realize not all of us are fortunate to have the next chapter with someone. So I think we turn to each other with a sense of gratefulness. And then we just have this language that we created, you know, almost 30 years ago, actually this year. Uh, it's such a specific vernacular that we speak within Slater Kinney. It's um, a lexicon that I only have with Corin. Uh, it's interlocking guitar parts. It's communicating with each other through the music. And uh, yeah, I've just, I think we've, we really were reminded of how sacred that is. And she just kept bringing me songs instead of bringing me food. So that was very helpful. Well, I feel like one of the things that you can expect in a Slater Kinney album is that you more or less share vocals equally. And on this record, Corin, you're singing the majority of the record. And I understand, Carrie, that was something you felt like you really needed just to hear Corin's voice. But did you feel up to the task, <laughs> Corin? Was yeah. that a little bit overwhelming? I, I mean, I was you know, happy to do it. I think, you know, I, I think singing is something that for me is kind of like my home base as a performer. And so, you know, it just, we just fell into the roles that we were comfortable with in writing and putting the record together. And, and it helped us sort of find our way through this sometimes difficult journey. And, um, yeah, I just, I, I, I wanted to do my best for the songs and for the record. 
You've said that it felt very vulnerable and emotional to sing some of these songs, and that sometimes you just really had to push through and maybe even felt like you weren't going to be able to do it. What helped you push through to the end and stick with it? Um, I think that, you know, Carrie as a collaborator is, is always like a, a really good, you know, support person. She always is like, you need to finish that song. That one's good. I like that chorus, you know, like I'll be like, I don't know. And, and, you know, it's like we, we keep each other going that way and, 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 and liking what the other person writes and, and, and um, you know, saying that and, and, and keeping that whole dream alive. It's like you kind of need that when you, when you sometimes feel that doubt. Well, Carrie has said that this album has a real control and a real mastery in the singing, that it's really exhilarating. And I love how much pride you each take in each other's talents. I, I mean, I, I will be Corinne's hype person forever. I just think her voice is incredible. And I listened to our earlier records, which obviously her voice is what attracted me to her when we first started playing. Uh, you know, her voice can peel paint off the walls. It's kind of a deal breaker, which I love. I love being in a band with a deal breaker voice. You know, we, we are, we're not aiming for that sort of mediocre middle. But now Corin just has this composure. She can vacillate between composure and then lack thereof. And we love exploring that messiness, that otherworldliness, sometimes that ugliness. But at the same time, she can then on a dime sing something really beautiful and that's a powerful asset to have as a co-songwriter just knowing you know the the dynamics that she can convey one of the songs you perform today is hell which is the opening track on little rope and that touches on your grief carrie but i feel and, and you've said that it also touches more widely about where we are as human beings can you talk a little bit about that song and and what it means and how it came to be yeah, I mean, I think that that song sort of came all at once. Um, and it's it's a moment of revelation, of feeling the absurdity of the violence in our culture and how we've kind of normalized it into, you know, something that is an everyday occurrence. And, um, you know... It, I think you have, especially as a parent, you have moments where you just feel shock and and rage that that's, that's the world that we're sending our kids into. And, you know, I, I think we wanted to have a moment of, of feeling that disconnection with the world we're in and, and you know, maybe push people out of that, you know, normalizing um, by using the metaphor of hell, of using this kind of like human nature can get used to anything, but why are we getting used to the way things are right now? Yeah, there's so much in these lyrics. I just can't stop listening each time. There's a new layer that just floats to the top for me. It, it brings a lot of emotions coming through me. Beauty is one of them. And speaking of beauty, you've talked about the beauty and sharing the record with others in a live setting and just the transcendent moment where you're both giving and you're gaining. And that made me tear up when I read that. It just really sort of makes my heart soar. Tell me more about the beauty of sharing your music, something that you create with other people. I think the live setting is where everything coalesces. And it's also the moment that clarifies how music is both transformational and uh, transportative. We can share a song that might have been written in one state, a state of loss or pain or heartache, and when you present it to the audience, you're meeting them individually and collectively where they are. And they might bring joy. They might be in a place that's celebratory. And all of a sudden, this song now is elevated it has a booing quality we're lifted and i think that's kind of magical about music uh the opposite can happen where you ha have a song that's starting to feel like it's touching on irony or has something flippant and then you're met with this heaviness that the audience is bringing and i think it's so rare to sit in a collective feeling with a group of people and allow for the spectrum of emotionality and Slater Kinney to me has always been a band that gives license to the breadth of human feeling and 
it allows for messiness and uncertainty and anger and just the vicissitudes of life. And I think it's so rare to have environments where we get to just be our imperfect selves. And every night we go out there and meet their imperfections with our imperfections. And it's a really beautiful chaos. Well, people come away from a live Slater Kinney show definitely exhilarated. And I feel like many people feel like they've been changed. I know I feel like all the cells in my body have been reorganized <laughs> after I've seen you play live, which is a wonderful thing. And Carrie, you've said that after everything you've been through the past year, that it's really raised the stakes for Slater Kinney as a band. What has it been like having this creative outlet for you during this time? And where do you... Where do you see the band going? I think we try not to make a lot of predictions. When I look back at my 19-year-old self and Corin's 21-year-old self, we certainly did not have a blueprint for where we were headed. I think now there is an intentionality, there is a deliberation, uh, there is you know, a, a feeling of gratitude. I think the stakes to me as an artist should feel high. You know, that it's, I would I never want to live through my last two years. And I don't think you have to be tortured to make an amazing record at all. I think that's a, a, a really um, corrosive kind of mythology that you have to be sad to make a great record. But I think you have to remember that the stakes are high for a lot of people. And I think music, at least Slater Kinney, has to match that tenor. That's the kind of goal we go into for every album, is just to lay everything on the stage, leave everything in the studio, like bring an honesty and a vulnerability to the music. So no matter what I'm going through or we're going through, that I think is our goal, is to just have the stakes of life be high. I and mean, that's something that I'll always know now. Those stakes are very high and, uh, you know, you don't really know what your last album is going to be, so you should make it a really good one. <laughs> well, Corin, you've also said that Little Rope signals the next era for Slater Kinney, so it sounds like you two are <laughs> right on track together on this. Yeah, it, it feels like we we wanted to write like a new chapter for the band, and so you know we 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 poured our heart into this to this record, and you know we we really made it personal so that we can share that with people and hopefully bring more people on the next stage of the band. Well, we thank you so much for sharing this with us today. The new album, Little Rope on Loma Vista Recordings is absolutely phenomenal and we feel so honored to have these live versions here on KEXP. Thank you, Cheryl. Thanks so much. Thank you everyone at KEXP. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much to all of our listeners and viewers for making wonderful sessions like this one with Slater Kinney possible. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You'll get notification every time we launch a new video. And also learn more about us at kexp.org. There's always a wonderful band to discover there. And you can support us with a financial gift. We are listener-powered. Again, more info at kexp.org. And once again, a big thank you to Slater Kinney. Thanks for having us. Thank you. You've got it tuned to KEXP, where the music matters. Discover new music at listener-powered kexp.org. Damn, son, where'd you find this?